And that's how it looks like when you print on a whole gel. That's the 96 well size gel, 10% SDS test gel. Um, so each well you put in a different NMR. Uh, it looks like this. The marker will be here and then six bars. The green one is the alkene. Because it's printed by the machine, so actually each bar is identical. There's no loading error. And this is, this is one of the actual image of the uh, Apple Street one skin cancer cell signal with 200 nm from the meal BGF for 600 points. Uh, you can see different protein, sorry, different antibody loaded in each well. We do a duplicate. Uh, so same antibody besides each other. Sometimes you will see some smear. It's, uh, it might be due to the wash or it might be just the problem of the antibody. And sometimes you see this, it might be washed. And the cool of the, uh, the advantage of that scanner is that you can also adjust the laser. So if you see some signal that's too strong, you can reduce the laser intensity. If you see the signal is too weak, you can increase the laser intensity. And also, uh, when, uh, when you start to add a signal body, you have to avoid the light. As long as you keep it away from the light, the signal is very stable for a couple of months or even years. So after you've done your experiment, you can keep it in the drawer and then you can uh, scan it like next week or something. something. The signal is still the same. So we, we use around 130 antibody, most of them are both antibody from cell signaling, some from other company. And so uh, what we got here is like, you know, of course, you want to know what's the biological meaning. Um, EGM stimulation compared between the high dosage 200 nanograms to the 200 nanograms, only very few stimulation here, both for ERK and both for P90ISK, also stimulate here, but you get more stimulation at higher dosage. That's totally reasonable. Oh, sorry. So this is just an enlarged figure that um, the two um, protein get similar by the two nanograms is essentially getting about 200. But you see much more stimulation like phosphor, uh, GAP1, PEG, or uh, phosphor PDGF receptor, alpha, and like step one of those. Um, so for the Apple Street one cell, it's very different. Um, it has a lot of EGF receptors, so once you add EGF, the progression of that cell is going to be suppressed. Two nanogram is around like 20% suppression. 200 is like 80% um, suppression. So we try to group those change. Um, it's hard. It's more than 120 NMI and different concentration, different time points. So what we think is that the pattern change, like for this one, it increased all the way after the simulation. For this one, it go up uh, to the maximum at five minutes and then goes down. We think, well, we hypothesize that the pattern that's similar, uh, they might have functions related to each other, um, like upstream, downstream. So we try to group them uh, together according to the change trend. And that's the whole data. Here is the different concentration of EGF from 0 to 50, 100, 200. And then that's all the antibody we, we try. And uh, we, we try to prove them according to the pattern. Um, like this one go up to the maximum at 1, this one to 5 and 15. And this one actually uh, not a deal at 70 minutes. And this one is go all the way up and they never go, go down. So we, we try to separate them into like five different groups. And by doing uh, fashion analysis with the cooperation of uh, Lothenberg in MIT, 
um, they're trying to pick up uh, 17 um, Enamari and that has no no cross react with other other uh, protein phosphoside and then they build a very passion network analysis and so what they found is that um, the phospho EGFR and the phospho PDGF uh, receptor B unit is the first that get activated and then they can they can affect several downstream targets and they found some uh, negative regression, they found some positive regression, they found some regression that's not reported before. And uh, so also like at low dosage, these two sites are going to get activated, but the phosphor suck can do the activation. At higher dosage, more than one three nanograms per meal, the phosphor EGFR and the phosphor PDGFR will get activated and then they can start to do the downstream activation. And you can see actually now only molecule involved in the EGFR is activated. The CRP2, that's the HER2, the uh, biomarker is the breast cancer detection. The kit, possible kit, possible SAR, and the FGFR, possible MED, uh, possible IGF1, they are all ready to each other. So this leads us to think that there's a great complicated network going on. Uh, downstream of, well, or parallel to the EGF receptor signaling. And that's my next sense, that if you try to target only one receptor uh, by a small molecule or drug, uh, you will always get a result of the tumor because there's a very complicated cross talk going on and they can easily bypass the target you, you suppress. So we think that in order to study how to cure the cancer, we might need to do a more comprehensive signal network study to find out all the crosstalk that we, we will be able to know, like how many targets we need to target at the same time to block the whole pathway for the cancer cell. So this is just a uh, figure of different complications.